starting with the obvious XQC. By far the most successful and well-known person in this video, XQC played for the Dallas Fuel back in 2018 and on Team Canada for three years in a row. He's now become arguably the biggest variety streamer in the world with a $100 million kit contract deal to back his name. Next up, Jay Jonak. This guy was basically the pioneer of flex support back in 2018, becoming the first MVP in the first season of the Overwatch League, landing him his own skin. He's still considered one of the best flex supports of all time. Jonak at number one. This person, Jonak in season one was just unplayable against. He literally was just so good. He somehow would just get like three picks going into a fight as Zenyatta. But nowadays, he has a much lower profile. His last activity on Twitter was almost two years ago, retweeting Max. His last activity on Instagram was also two years ago on December 20th, 2022. And his Discord server is pretty much dead, with NSFW bots being left unchecked. On Twitch, his last activity was also about a year ago. Ru Jae Hong was also one of the most hyped up supports in the 2018 season, playing for the Seoul Dynasty for two years. He actually got into a major car accident earlier this year, being unable to find a surgeon for eight hours, with his injuries almost becoming fatal. However, he eventually found a surgeon and thankfully, he's recovered well from the accident. As for the current day, Ru Jae Hong has a steady, healthy and active YouTube audience, which frankly, I had no idea about. He's also playing for a team named Old Ocean, and if you check his community tab, you can see him promoting the match that his team had this opening week of Overwatch CS. Frankie was the main tank player for the Philadelphia Fusion and for Team Finland, being most well known for his aggressive Rhinoc play at the time. He retired at the end of 2020 to return to World of Warcraft, joining a high-level esports organization called Echo. Echo consistently have a top level track record, and if you go to Echo's website, you can see that Fraggy has his own section as a streamer. His last stream was roughly last month, and he remains relatively active on Twitter. Aspire was a hitscan player for the Toronto Defiant and Vancouver Titans, who eventually got exposed for some questionable stuff with miners. I made an entire video about that a year ago, so I recommend watching that for more context on the situation. This is the clearest video I've ever seen, this is the most HD shit ever! This is 4K! How did they get you in 4K? That ain't me. In terms of where Spire is at today, it's hard to know. The closest thing I could find was an old LinkedIn page, which just shows Aspire's education and his work experience before he joined the Overwatch League, but it hasn't been updated at all. Speaking of another figure in a similar lane, Dream Casper was one of the key DPS players to look out for in 2018. However, he got caught messaging a 14-year-old when he was 21, which is probably the most clear-cut case you'll ever find in the Overwatch scene. He tried making two responses, one in 2019 and one in 2020, both of which were badly received, and yet again, Dream Casper is fully MIA. OG started his career as a contenders player for American Tornado. After securing multiple place finishes in 2021, he was then picked up by the Atlanta Reign, then the Defiant, and then the Excelsior in 2023. He then played for a rejoined version of American Tornado called Primus Tornado, but that only lasted for about a month at the end of 2023. Then, earlier this year, him and Sam got exposed for some racist messages. OG essentially got blackballed by the entirety of NA and has since remained inactive. He did post an apology, but that's been the last activity of him that I can find. Of course, it would only be fitting to do Sam right after. He was also involved in that situation with OG, being dropped from the MAT roster and receiving an indefinite suspension from Winthrop University. However, unlike OG, Sam has remained somewhat active, with his last stream being just six days ago. What still isn't active though is his position on Winthrop University. Shawfall was one of the star players in the first season of the Overwatch League, getting that infamous King's Row bamboozle. I'm gonna call this the merry-go-round because it makes me laugh, makes me happy, and Shawfall switches to the winner maker at just the right time! He also played for Team Canada for four years in a row, then moved to Toronto Defiant in the 2020 season. He's since retired, becoming a variety streamer and content creator ever since. He consistently streams on Twitch, playing whatever he wants to and pulling high viewership regardless. Seems like he made that transition from pro player to content creator pretty seamlessly. Speaking of someone else who had made that transition, Super TF was arguably the best tank player in the world at one point. He ended up playing for the San Francisco Shock for almost half a decade, but on March 27th, 2022, Super officially retired from the Overwatch League due to burnouts. Since then, he's very successfully made that transition to full-time content creation, mixing in a bit of variety to his content too. 
He also last played professionally for Team USA, which obviously didn't go that well. Most soy walk. Okay, can everyone into the video <laughs> of all time? Surely that's a walk out of the player practice area. I live in. He's doing the virgin walk from the Chad versus virgin. <laughs> 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 so I think they like double trolled themselves, you know, like they played the macro guy um, for the mechanical matchup and they played the mechanical guy for the macro matchup. Like they just did the exact opposite of what they needed to do to win. As a side note, he's also a great cross dresser too, most recently doing Makama, thanks in large part to Timiko for the photography and makeup skills. Another former shock player that successfully transitioned to content creation is Sleepy. Sleepy initially played on the shock from September 2017 through to April 2019, eventually being traded to the Justice at the end of that year. Since then, he's retired, pumping out content and streams on a fairly consistent basis. There's also this video of him, Super, and Tens showing a three-way kiss, so there's that. Continuing with the shock theme, Moth was one of the best main support players in the world, and in fact, he was rated to be the second best main support player of all time by Platcha. Number two is Moth. There's no one that is the two-time back-to-back champ like Moth playing the role that he did. He finished off his Overwatch career by playing for the LA Gladiators in the 2021 season, unfortunately going off the grid like many players in this video. However, unlike those players, I actually found Moth's LinkedIn and you can see the stuff he's been doing. Last year, he had an internship as a security engineer in New York, which required a lot of complex shit that I would never understand in a million years. This year into this month, he's had another internship in California, with the title being Cybersecurity and Critical Infrastructure. It's a shame that Moth doesn't at least occasionally tweet to keep up to date on socials, but it's nice to know that he's seemingly doing well. As for another key shock player at the time, being Sinatra, he's had a very mixed public reception since his retirement. He got his own MVP skin during the 29 season, but allegations about SA came out afterwards, with the skin being redacted and public reception being split. No I've already talked about Sinatra in the later, past, and from what I can remember, Technicals made a good video covering the controversy, so I recommend checking it out for more thorough details. If you're wondering what he's up to in the current day, he's busy securing that hefty Valorant bag primarily through streaming. He easily pulls in thousands of viewers per stream, so he's obviously doing quite well for himself. One of the arch enemies of Shock during 2019 was Vancouver Titans, in large part thanks to a man called Bumper. Bumper was known for his extremely aggressive Rhinoc play that many coaches to this day thought was very one-dimensional and lacked much nuance. The last known appearance of Bumper was on a team called Has Been, which I believe tried to compete for Overwatch CS at the start of the year. The team featured veterans like Haxel and Ru Jae-yong at the time, but as you can see, when they played against a team of more experienced pros, they didn't do so well. Much else isn't known about this team or Bumper though, and he's remained pretty quiet since retirement. Linksa was one of the biggest names in early Overwatch League, playing for the Houston Outlaws for 3 years, then on the Vancouver Titans in 2021, until retiring from there on. However, he didn't actually go off the grid, deciding to make the transition to content creation and to Apex Legends. Unlike a lot of people on this list, he's actually fairly active, with his last stream being yesterday. However, Link's viewership is somewhat low, especially considering where he was just a few years ago. He also uploads on TikTok, his latest one was yesterday, but they're also pretty unsuccessful. I assume that this is mostly just a hobby for Linksa, instead of a serious endeavour into content creation, but for most people, I think this would count as a falloff. He's also on an Apex team, but I assume it's not on a very good one, considering he's not earning that much. Before I continue, I just want to quickly plug my coaching. If you're interested in climbing fast, check the top link in the description. Hydration was also another notable name back in 2018 for the Houston Outlaws. He was pretty well known for his ability to flex between heroes and roles, with his tenure ending in 2021 for the Houston Outlaws. He's basically been MIA ever since, but his last tweet was in March this year, quote tweeting the announcement of Marvel Rivals. However, I can't find any content he's made recently or any streams. His Discord community is also pretty dead, but last November, T Frank, who has the Discord role for being one of his friends, just says that hydration is straight chillin'. Space was one of the biggest Western names a few years back, being in a similar, albeit smaller position, to someone like Super. 
He started off his career on the LA Valiant back in 2018, finishing it off on the LA Gladiators in 2022. He didn't really play much at the end of his career, and when he did, it was primarily on Circuit Royale. However, one of the most memorable moments of space was back in 2021, where a bunch of pros and streamers were trying to hit the Sigma jump in the practice range. Like some of the other names on the list, Space transitioned to streaming and content creation on mostly Overwatch, pulling in respectable viewership. He also keeps up to date with the pro scene, as he was at the recent Dallas Major for OWCS. Skewed was one of the best support players near the tail end of the Overwatch League, forming a dominant gladiator support line with him and Shu, but also doing decently well on the Soul Infernal. However, he's been inactive ever since. His Liquipedia page still says he's active, even though he's not on a team. His Twitch appears to be dead, his Discord appears to be dead, and his Twitter has been inactive since 2023. Poco is one of the biggest Overwatch veterans there is in the scene, who's still relatively active to this day. He spent the majority of his time at the Philadelphia Fusion, had a short stint for the Spitfire in 2022, then came back to Fusion, or the newly named Soul Infernal, to finish off his career. For now, he mainly streams Overwatch and pulls in great viewership on a consistent basis, so I think he's doing just fine. Another legendary off-tank player was Fury, who was most well known for his diva play and that sane 180 gravi that he got back in 2019. He unfortunately ended his career off in 2022, remaining inactive. The last activity I could find of him was him streaming on June the 28th, 2023. Continuing with the Fusion theme, EQO was also one of the bigger names on the Fusion. He's probably most well known for that insane clutch on Rialto in the 2020 season that kept that Map 7 series alive. Build it up, will it be enough? One kill, two kill, are you kidding? Me. EQO now finds it with the what? third, and now it is overtime. XE moving over to the tracer to try and deny, but EQO, EQO, what a player, what a star! The last activity from EQO has actually been pretty recent, believe it or not. He hasn't been streaming much, but last month he did stream himself playing some Overwatch, so he at least plays the game somewhat. All his other socials like his Instagram and Twitter have been pretty inactive though. Sparkle was one of the most bombastic personalities in Overwatch, and before the Overwatch League, he was famous for clips like these. Oh shit! Holy shit! What the fuck? Oh my god! He was picked up by the Pounce Eternal in 2020, winning that summer showdown against the Fusion, and then he was picked up by the Dallas Fuel, eventually winning the 2022 playoffs. Since the end of the Overwatch League, he was of course let go and from there on, I don't think Sparkle has actually been on a team. There was this really confusing tweet made by FTG, also known as Zeta Division, who posted this tweet. The translation basically states that FTG want to recruit promising players who can essentially become the new Sparkle. This is really confusing because Sparkle isn't on FTG as a player, and in fact, if you check his Liquipedia, he hasn't been on a team this year. Still, Sparkle retweeted this post anyways, so I'm left confused. I also find it funny that FTG blacked out his Dallas jersey to fit in with the colour scheme. Decay was also a player for the Dallas Fuel at one point, but he also played for a ton of other teams during the time too. He was a double-edged sword of a player, being known for his incredible ability to play a large chunk of the DPS pool, while also not getting along with teammates that well. Decay did find an Overwatch team this year, called Genesis, but unfortunately, on the 10th of April this year, he left the team. For now, he seemingly streams Overwatch on occasion, but he doesn't save the VODs, so I can't really show you how often he does it. Carpet was one of the highest salaried Overwatch veterans, who played for the Philadelphia Fusion throughout his tenure. He eventually ended up retiring at the end of 2022, leaving to play for a Valorant team called T1 as IGL. He remains somewhat active on socials, last streaming on July 3rd this year, and his last activity on Twitter being July 24th. Sardo was a key main tank player who proved himself entering the 2020 season. He last played for Toronto Defiant at the end of 2021, and has seemingly gone off the grid. His Twitter has been inactive since September 2021, alongside his Twitch, and even searching up his real name provides no searches for an Instagram or a social or anything at all, just esports pages documenting his career. Corey was an American hitscan player who had a short stint in the league. He played on the Washington Justice and was notable for being one of the bright spots on that roster, considering they didn't do very well in the regular season. Corey then retired to go pro in Valorant, being on some pretty notable orgs like FaZe Clan and TSM. To this day, he's still playing, this time on a team called Dark Zero. At least he was, until he dropped an LFT from just a few days ago, which got a ton of support. I assume he also streams pretty regularly, with his last stream being 7 days ago, as of the writing of this script. 
he definitely had one of the most successful, if not unusual transitions from being an Overwatch pro. Someone who also went down a similar path was Baby Bay. He also had a similar stint in the Overwatch League, playing for the Shock in 2019, then for the Atlanta Reign in 2020. Of course, when Valorant dropped, he moved over, starting off as a professional Valorant player, and now he's a caster for the game. I don't know too much about Valorant, but he's seemingly doing well for himself, considering he's on the main desk for the VCT. Someone who's a bit lesser known, Fusions was probably the best British main tank in 2018 and 2019. He led Team UK to 4th place in 2018, but to be honest, he had a pretty mediocre career in the Overwatch League playing for the Boston Uprising. He retired at the end of the 2021 season, and if you're wondering where he's at now, you can view his LinkedIn page, where he now works as a customer success executive. He's had the job since April 2022, so for quite a while, and he stayed at the job ever since. In terms of a much more well-known name, Defran did technically go pro for a short period of time. Before he got signed to the Atlanta Reign, he was known for being quite a toxic player, but was gifted a second chance on the Atlanta Reign. One of his many memorable plays was during the Ghost Meta, where he rocket jumped over a roof to land a fight-winning play. Oh, that is interesting. That is a really- Can you get over the roof there? Oh my- Oh, oh you my! Can't. What a play! Touchdown. What a grab! Tosses in the grab! They're gonna make it work! That crew's taken out by the ensuing self-destruct! <laughs> Since then, Defran has focused on pumping out more daily YouTube content, and actually has a streaming schedule. It's pretty safe to say that he's definitely doing well for himself, at least financially. Of course, I have to cover profits. He's one of the best and long-time Overwatch veterans. From putting the middle finger up to the camera in 2018, to earning the nickname Playoff Profit, he's undeniably one of the GOATs. However, it all came to an end on February the 20th, 2024, where he decided to officially retire. The last activity I could find from Profit was a screenshot of his Instagram story, which blew up on Twitter. It basically begged for Profit to come back, and he replied underneath saying thank you. It seems that Profit is just vibing, living his life, and seems pretty content. KSF is a name that new Overwatch players won't remember, but veterans certainly will. He played on the LA Valiant for about three years until joining the Outlaws in December 2020. However, like many other players in this video, he retired towards the end of 2021 on September the 9th. Looking at his LinkedIn, you can now see that he's working as a software engineer in Seattle. After his retirement, KSF had graduated from a software engineering bootcamp and then picked up a full-time job at a company called Thrive. He still sometimes goes on Twitter, adding apply on May 31st, and his last stream was about 4 months ago. In short, he looks like he's having a pretty normal life. Who would have guessed? Hydron's up next, and he's had a somewhat bumpy career. He was on the same team as OG and Sam during 2020, eventually getting signed to the Florida Mayhem in 2022, and then the Defiant in 2023. He's publicly had some beef, going back and forth with his former head coach, Gumba. That's Kappa Flappa Saka. <laughs> everything and not only is it kappa not only did it happen almost every day right and that's that, that also goes into my point about like him like taking drugs and shit as for now he's doing decently well for himself gaining good viewership on youtube and it seems like he streams every day at around 5 p.m bst of course it only makes sense to go over yet another pro turn streamer this time one of the most successful ones Seagull in some ways had an arc very similar to XQC, breaking out in the Overwatch scene with a 1 minute 17 second Anubis game. Considering he was very talented early on, winning NA contenders back in 2017, it's no surprise that the Fuel picked him up for the very first season of the Overwatch League. However, he had a quick retirement on August 7th. As for now, he's still doing very well for himself, getting over a thousand live viewers on Twitch, mainly just by streaming League of Legends. Shadowburn was one of the top Genji players back in his day. His time in the league was short but sweet, playing in 2018 and 2019 for the Fusion and Eternal respectively. He was also infamous for his dance moves, thanks to an edit by Bad Pachamari. Unfortunately though, on April 6th, 2020, Shadowburn retires, and he moved over to Valorant for a year or two. However, his last stream or video was an Overwatch one on November the 13th, 2022. Since then, I can't find anything else on the guy's whereabouts. Finally, to finish this video off, Agilities had an almost cult following back when he was a pro. I'm only including Agilities for this part one, because I know it's ATP's favorite player of all time, so maybe I'm a bit biased. 
He started off playing for the Valiant back in 2018, of course having that infamous in and out talk. He then got on to Toronto Define at the end of 2019. A year later, on October 21st, 2020, he then left Toronto, but he joined back as a content creator and then left Toronto again. In terms of where he's at, funnily enough, he actually has a Facer account since 2016, but there's been literally zero activity on it. As for his socials, his Facebook seems to be private, his and his last stream was years ago, when I assume he tried the Overwatch 2 beta. The only potential thing I could find was from the mum of Agilities, who responded to a fan by saying that he's okay. She says that if Agilities could peek in the game again, he would stream it, but she alludes to Agilities pursuing another path. I also tried looking Agilities up on LinkedIn as well, and found nothing. His Discord server doesn't show much activity or news about him either. It's probably safe to say that Agilities doesn't miss the limelight that he once had, and he probably could make a return today and be more successful than most streamers. Unfortunately though, we're probably not going to hear of him anytime soon. So that's it for the video. If you enjoyed this, I recommend watching this video here because it's in a similar style. I'm calling this a part 1 because there's so many pro players to cover and I want to gauge how well this video does. I know that I'm going to get a billion comments saying, why didn't you include this pro player? Why didn't you cover Boombox or Jerry or Mickey or Taimu or fucking AKM or whoever? I will cover an extra 50 players in a part 2 if this video does well. Anyways, that's it for now, until next time.